This presentation is a brief tutorial on a topic of machine learning called transfer learning. My name is Isabel Guyon. I work out of Clopinet, California. If you're interested in participating in a challenge on the topic of transfer learning, please follow the link clopinet.com ul and listen to the rest of the presentation to learn how to solve this task. Can learning about familiar objects, concepts, or animals, like cats, help us learning about less familiar objects, concepts, or animals, like tigers? In the vocabulary of transfer learning, you have a source domain and source task labels, and a target domain and target task labels. It is understood that the source domain has data which is available in much greater abundance than the target domain. In a nice review of transfer learning, recently Pan and Yang proposed the taxonomy of transfer learning methods. Transfer learning subdivides into several subcategories according to whether or not labels are available in the source domain and the target domain. They further subdivide according to whether or not the task is the same in the target and in the source domain. We're going to be exploring this taxonomy starting from the bottom. First, unsupervised transfer learning. This is the case when no label is available in either the source and the target domains. On this slide, we are showing a classical setup for training machines with unsupervised learning. This would be the first step of learning in our transfer learning process. Using data from a source domain, we input it to a learning machine that has two modules, a module P, the preprocessor, and a module R, the reconstructor we're seeking to reproduce at the output of the learning machine the input of the learning machine. And what really interests us is the in inner representation that's produced by the preprocessor. After this first step of learning, without any label, we can extract the preprocessor and then include it in a new learning machine that's composed again of two modules, a preprocessor and a classifier. And this time, using data from the target domain, we can retrain the whole system to predict labels. In this step, you can either train only the classifier module or you can fine tune as well the preprocessor module. It is understood that we benefit from having trained the preprocessor on a large number of samples from the source domain that the preprocessor will be pre-trained and therefore will perform better than if it would be trained only on a few examples from the target domain. Once the system is trained, it's going to be used then in the target domain. The target domain is really what interests us so the performance of the system will be measured only on target domain data. There are many methods for training a learning machine in an unsupervised learning way. These methods include manifold learning. The most popular method is principal component analysis or PCA. Other methods are listed on this page. Deep learning methods also offer a number of ways in which the preprocessor can be trained. Deep learning methods perform greedy, layer-wise, unsupervised training of multi-layer neural networks and Bayesian networks. For example, to train a stack of autoencoders, you may start with a two-layer neural network trained to reproduce its inputs. Then, you rip out the last layer and train another two-layer neural network to reproduce the first hidden layer representation, and so on. Clustering also offers a number of ways in which to perform unsupervised learning. As an example, consider the k-means algorithm. 
start with random cluster centers, iterate, assign the examples to their closest center to form cluster, and then recompute the centers by averaging the cluster members. To create a new data representation from an original vector x, features fk may be obtained by computing a similarity coefficient between x and the cluster centers xk, for instance, the negative exponential of the distance between x and xk. This algorithm was applied to the sample data set of GTT recognition ULE, that stands from Unsupervised Learning Example, provided for the Unsupervised and Transfer Learning Challenge, to demonstrate that even with such a simple algorithm, you can improve performance over using the original data representation. The MATLAB code is provided. Follow these pointers to learn more about unsupervised learning. Let's move on and examine the case of cross-task transfer learning. Cross-task transfer learning arises when labels are available only in a source domain at the time of training, but there are different source and target tasks. In this slide, we illustrate schematically the method of data representation learning. First, you use a combination of preprocessor and classifier that is trained with source domain data. Then you repot the preprocessor and you plug it into another system that will be trained on target domain data. An alternative method is to use kernel learning. On this slide, what we call a kernel is a learning machine composed of three elements, two identical replicas of a preprocessor and a comparator called S on the figure that compares the outputs of the preprocessors and outputs whether or not the inputs are identical or different. The kernel is trained by inputting examples from the source domain and uh, providing as output labels one if the inputs are from the same category or minus one if the inputs are from different categories. During training, there is the constraint which is imposed that the two replicas of the preprocessor have to remain identical. After training, you may use the learn kernel to make comparisons between examples in the target domain. You may use it, for example, to perform a nearest neighbor classification or to train another type of kernel method, including parson windows or support vector machines. Alternatively, you can rip out the preprocessor and then use it to train a learning machine composed of a preprocessor and a classifier as we did before. Here are some cool results in cross-task transfer learning obtained recently by Colabert and collaborators. In a recent paper they call Natural Language Processing Almost from Scratch, they succeed in approaching state-of-the-art performance in a number of NLP tasks while being orders of magnitude faster than their competing methods. They achieve this by using cross-task transfer learning in the following way. The word embedding module W computes a 50-dimensional representation for each vocabulary word. Fixed-length sequences of words are extracted from a large corpus of about 900 million words. Incorrect sequences are created by randomly replacing the central word. The task consists in producing a score whose magnitude indicates whether a sequence of words is genuine or incorrect. An assemblage of several word embedding modules W and a ranking module R is trained on this task. The target tasks are then trained using smaller corpora of labeled sentences. Each sentence is produced by assembling the word embedding component W and routing their outputs together with ancillary information to classifiers that produce tags for the words of interest. Many natural language processing systems rely on the considerable linguistic knowledge that went into the manual design of task-specific input features. 
The system of collaborate and collaborator learns useful features using an essentially unsupervised task trained with a very large corpus. Follow these pointers to learn more about cross-task transfer learning. Moving on, we are going now to explore another branch of the taxonomy of transfer learning. Let us look into inductive transfer learning, which is the case where labels are available in a target domain. And more particularly, let's examine the case when labels are also available in a source domain. We call that multitask transfer learning. In multitask transfer learning, we can train a system consisting of a preprocessor and a classifier simultaneously on data from a source domain and from a target domain. It is understood that we have far fewer examples in the source domain, and the domain that really interests us is the target domain for which we have far fewer examples. So the hope is that by training jointly on examples from both domains, we are going to get better at solving the task of interest in the target domain. Subsequently, we are going to be using the system thus trained on target domain data. This slide shows a model that has been used by Salah Kudikov and collaborators to perform transfer learning. It is a hierarchical non-parametric Bayesian model. As it turns out, hierarchical models are particularly suitable for cross-task transfer learning. If you have a class that includes very few examples compared to other classes, say the class of Gauss, it may be helpful to learn a hierarchy of classes, including the class of animals. Using such a hierarchical model trained on many animals, they were able to perform one-shot learning, that is to learn the class of cows with a single training example. At the bottom, they illustrate the proximity induced by the model between a query image and the top-ranking images and compare it with Euclidean distance, showing the efficiency of their method. Finally, going back to our taxonomy of transfer learning, we are going to look into self-taught learning, which is also a case of inductive learning, but in this case, no labels are available in the self-taught learning. The setup is very similar as the one of cross-task transfer learning, except that we have no labels in the source domain. And so the labels for the source domain can be thought of as latent variables. After training on those data from the source and the target domain, we're going to be using the system only on data from the target domain. The authors that coined the term self-taught learning contrasted it with other types of transfer learning in this example. The target task is always the classification of elephants and rhinoceros images. The source task may be the same or maybe the classification of other images. In the case of unsupervised transfer learning, neither source nor target tasks have labels available for learning. In semi-supervised learning, only the source task comes with labels, while in multitask learning, labels are available for both. In self-taught learning, however, labels are available only for the target task. With their self-taught learning method based on sparse coding and SVMs, they have been able to successfully transfer knowledge from handwritten digit to handwritten letter recognition, from handwritten letters to printed letters, and from Reuters article to web pages or Usenet articles. Follow these pointers to learn more about inductive transfer learning. In conclusion, Transfer learning algorithms offer solutions to problems in which a lot of training samples are available for a source task, but fewer training samples are available for a similar but different target task. We started a program of challenges featuring problems in which transfer learning is applicable. If you are interested, please follow the link clapinit.com ul. Thank you for your attention. This work would not have been possible without the help of the data donors and many volunteers and sponsors who are very gratefully acknowledged.